Is the interactive broker's cash account worth it? So in this video, I'm going to talk about the interactive broker's cash account and whether it's worth it or not. And before doing that, go over to adamfire.com, especially if you're an expat or a high net wealth individual, and see how I can help you on your investing journey. Now, interactive brokers have increased their cash margin uh, account in terms of uh, if you want to actually uh, lend money from interactive brokers, uh, now it's much more expensive to do so. But the flip side of that is now if you leave cash in their cash account and you don't invest the money, you get decent rates of interest. So for example, on US dollars currently, the first $10,000, you will get no interest, but above that, you'll get about 4.8% interest. So for example, if you've got $20,000, you'll make about 2.4% because the first uh, 10,000 is zero. On say $100,000, it'll probably be close to 4.6%. On British pounds, it's zero on the first 8,000 pounds. But after that, it's about 4.4, uh, I believe. Uh, so again, on 100,000 pounds, it might be about 4.3, 4.2, and, and so on. Now, is this a good deal? Now, first of all, obviously, it's not a good deal if you've only got 10,000 or 20,000 or even 30,000, because the first 10,000 is applied at a 0% rate. Second of all, you do have to remember a few facts. Money market funds or money market ETFs are actually cash-like investments. In other words, if you look at a money market fund, it barely goes down, but by the same token, when interest rates are low, it barely went up. So when interest rates were at 0% or 0.1%, the money market fund would give you about 0.1 or 0.2%. And likewise, a money market fund, now that interest rates are higher, it will give you uh, in some cases over 5%, even on you know the first $10,000. So you have to remember that a money market fund, sometimes the returns are gonna be higher than this for comparable uh, levels of risk. Uh, and the bigger point is the opportunity cost. You've got to remember a basic fact that if you look very long-term at stocks, bonds, real estate investment trust known as REITs and cash, long-term cash has always produced the worst returns from those asset classes and also you've also got a currency or exchange rate risk that's especially a risk if you're an expat or internationally mobile person moving from country to country but it's a risk for anyone really in terms of let's say for example myself i'm from the uk obviously as you can tell by my accent and I don't think anyone who is from the UK who's traveled internationally could really doubt that the British pound has deflated a lot, not just in terms of numbers, but also in terms of purchasing power parity in the last 15 or 20 years. And in addition to that, obviously countries that have weaker currencies, inflation tends to be a bit higher. So this is not a bad deal for certain kinds of people. And I do think in certain limited situations, it's one of the best options in the market. For example, if you're already a client of interactive brokers and you're saving and investing for a house, I would say in that case, if you're just gonna have it for one or two years uh, in cash, it can make a lot of sense um, just in the cash account. But if you're looking to keep it in long-term and be a long-term investor, which is what everyone should aim to be with the bulk of their money, a money market fund is going to actually give you more than this but also A-rated bonds are going to give you much more than this. For example, you've got Halliburton now giving 7.6%. They're an A-rated company. There's other A-rated companies, Coca-Cola and others giving higher than 5%. And more importantly than that, the market, even though they're more volatile, just look at the history of the S&P 500, all the major markets. They've given an average of 11% per year since 1945, albeit some years and some decades are better than others, uh, assuming you reinvest dividends. Uh, and that kind of leads me on to something else. And that's that if you look at some stock markets like the UK FTSE 100, even though it's true to say that the capital values haven't increased much in recent times compared to the US stock market, the FTSE 100 regularly has given a dividend yield of over 4%. There are sometimes it's gone down to two and a half, three and a half percent Sometimes it's been over 5%. But in the last 10 years, you know, 4%, 4.5% is pretty average. That means that even if 
you know, you get a 1% or 2% average return on the FTSE 100, you're going to get a higher return than keeping your money in a, a cash account. And the risk is not necessarily higher per se if you actually hold long term. I've done many videos about that before. The stock market investing is kind of high risk if you do it in the short term, but if you do it very long term, it's not high risk at all. And for that matter, there are other funds out there. I've done a video as well on the JEPI fund, the JEPI fund, JP Morgan fund. That's giving a 12% dividend right now and it's low volatility. So what we have to remember is in a scenario like we have now where interest rates are higher you have more fixed return options elsewhere and more dividend options elsewhere that are going to beat that four or five percent that interactive brokers are offering you that doesn't mean that four or five percent or probably maximum 4.7 percent that interactive brokers are offering isn't good in certain circumstances just there are better options out there and for that matter even government bonds we do have to remember something that as interest rates kind of peak and then they fall, government bonds look like a decent play uh, again, long term, maybe not very short term. So in the current interest rate situation, just focusing on the highest you can get in cash, it's a mistake compared to just focusing on long term yields and a long term investing strategy. Anyways, I'm, I'm very, very pleased and positive uh, to say that I believe I've picked the right one. Um, the results um, in the last couple of years have, have, have overreached my expectations by far, um, and um, I see no reason um, why it should not continue. Of course, I can highly recommend uh, him as your financial advisor for now and for the future, because hesitating is uh, missing out. Obviously, the best result in market right now is Adam.